one of the things that we're taught at this college, or one of the many of the things that our classes uh, teach about, is anti-colonialism, decolonization. And here you have the, uh, the world, one of the world's last major colonial powers. Um, and as a, as an institution that in our classrooms takes a stand against colonization, we wanted to do that as a school. As a school. Um, you know, and so, and also I want to say that, you know, under international law, uh, you know, Gaza is an occupied place, and under international law, an occupied people have the right to resist through, uh, you know, through, through various means. And so this whole, this whole notion that, uh, oh, you have to think about it in a unbalanced, unbiased, neutral way before you can come to a, a solid conclusion is, is, yeah, I, it doesn't make sense because there is no neutral and un- and uh, balanced way to think about this when there is a occupying power uh, and an occupying military and an occupied people and that's something that was a dialogue all over this campus for the past two years mm. while I was involved and still is something we're still talking about um, but uh, basically you know for a long time this college was trying to say oh we have we need to remain neutral blah 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 and you can't remain neutral especially not when your uh, college or your institution is invested mm. in the occupation you are not neutral you are uh, automatically on the side of the occupying power if you are invested in the occupying power so like how Zinn says you can't be neutral on a moving train right uh, exactly, Brian, exactly. just to be clarify, um, when Hampshire divested last week, you divested from six companies that you allege are involved in human rights abuses inside uh, Israel and the occupied territories. Um, when you made that announcement, there were those on the um, board of trustees at Hampshire itself who said, no, no, we didn't invest for that, re- divest for that reason. Can you tell us a little bit about the to and fro? Sure. So what we did is we divest. The college divested from the uh, from a mutual fund which held the six companies that we uh, that SJP, the Students for Justice in Palestine, identified. And that included um, Caterpillar, the heavy Cata- machinery um, company. So these companies are Caterpillar, United Technologies, General Electric, Terex, Motorola, and ITT. Um, so the college is sort of now taking the stance of trying to depoliticize uh, our two-year campaign. And we think that's partially in response to threats by people like Alan Dershowitz, who called the college, personally called me and other SJP spokesmen trying to bully us and trying to intimidate us. But the fact of the matter is that before February 7th, we were invested in the occupation. Today, we are not. And the college has admitted this was a direct result of uh, – of the petition and the work that SJP did, mm-hmm. um, so you know the college can try to try to take uh, any depoliticizing stance it wants, but you know our audience knows that um, that why this happened. And I also want to point out that Hampshire College was the first college in the United States to divest from apartheid South Africa um, in 1977. And at that time, the college also tried to try to depoliticize that, put it under the radar mm-hmm. then too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're familiar now, with one it. of our shining star examples of how great the college uh, is. Ali Abunima, to you, you worked on this issue for so many years. What was your first thought when you heard about the Hampshire decision? Well, I want to congratulate Brian and all his colleagues because they have done a tremendous thing. They've made history, and they've done the courageous thing that none of our members of Congress, uh, none of our uh, people in government, uh, none of our uh, national columnists and pundits are willing to do. They've taken a really courageous stance, and they have made a, a tremendous contribution to nonviolence, to peace, and to justice, and to ending the conflict. I mean, boycott has a tremendous history in the civil rights movement in this country, the Montgomery bus boycott. So there are also efforts to paint this kind of tactic as if it's somehow legitimate and doesn't have a tremendous history in the struggle for justice. So they have done a tremendous thing. They're going to face all kinds of pressure now. So this is the first uh, battle that they've won, and there are going to be counterattacks on them by those people who support injustice, who support apartheid, who are invested in the status quo. So it's very important Mm -hmm. that we rally to them, that we, we recognize the courage of the stance, 
that there is no neutrality between uh, slave and slaveholder, between uh, apartheid perpetrator and apartheid victim, between occupier and occupied, between colonizer and colonized, that as scholars, as activists, as students, as citizens, we are required to take a moral stance on this. And the students from Hampshire College have, have led the way. I want to say that others are working around the country on this issue. And so the struggle is being waged everywhere. And I hope that they can learn and be inspired from what has happened at Hampshire College.